Many people may not remember or know about it, but one of the most frequently discussed topics in the British music press during the first half of 1968 was the rock and roll revival. 1968 saw a renewed interest in 50s rock and several singles released at the time seemed to look back at the 1950s in search of inspiration. This sudden bout of nostalgia prompted record labels to re-release albums by some of the big stars of the 50s. Rock Around the Clock by Bill Haley, for instance, was reissued in 1968 and became a top 20 hit in Britain 13 years after it was originally released. The success of Marlon Brando's film The Wild One was also partly responsible for the 50s nostalgia. In the UK, the film was banned by the British Board of Film Censors for 14 years and was first seen by the general UK public in 1968. 1967 had been the year of psychedelia, the year of Sgt. Peppers, Piper at the Gates of Dawn, San Francisco and the Summer of Love. But by early 1968, flower power seemed to be on the way out and many fans and artists seemed to long for the simplicity and immediacy of 50s rock and roll. In January 1968, Pete Townsend said, I'd like to see music right back in the early stages of Billy Fury. Kids today are getting a fantastically raw deal as far as pop music is concerned. If you're 13 years old, it's a bit much when the chart is full of I am the walrus which nobody understands. Where's the excitement of rock and roll? There's no bloody youth in music today. That same month, The Who appeared on top of the pops dressed as rockers. At the time, Judy in disguise by John Fred and his Playboy band was number one in the US charts and it was also climbing up the charts in Britain. The single was seen as a triumphal return to the simplicity of 50s rock and roll. In Britain, the first pop single of 1968 that drew influences from the 50s was Fire Brigade by The Move. Released on January 1968, Penny Valentine reviewed the single for Disc Magazine. A very odd record that at times reminded me of the Beatles. The lyrics are a bit of superb nuttiness, with fire bells clanging and a marvellous tight sound on the vocals. The production is nice, with Eddie Cochran guitar going in there solid and strong and making it sound like a send-up of things like Let's Go to the Hop by Danny and the Juniors. The single reached number three in the UK charts and the press hailed the move as the leaders of the rock revival. The revival was even discussed on British television. Jonathan King, who had a show called Good Evening, invited The Move's lead singer Carl Wayne to talk about it. He also invited Freddie Fingers Lee, who was the leader of a band called At Last the 1958 Rock and Roll Show. This was one of the many revival rock bands that emerged at the time. The band featured a pre-mot The Hooper Ian Hunter on bass. So, is rock and roll returning? Yeah, it's coming back, definitely. But uh, not in the 58 concept, you know, it's going to be a modern... Oh. the 1968 rock and roll, I think. New rock and roll. Yeah, right. Isn't it still rather backward looking? I mean, I feel sad that we can't progress in pop music instead of having to look backwards at, at eras gone by. A month later, Pete Townsend and company also released a single inspired by 50s rock and roll. Disc magazine journalist Nancy Lewis reported from New York. American radio stations this week pounced on the Who's new single Call Me Lightning. It definitely catches the mood of what seems to be the great leap backwards. It seems most of the records currently played on New York radio stations are revived 45s so their new disc fits right into that sound category. It's so uncool that it's cool. And it wouldn't surprise me if it sells a cool million copies. The single, however, was a flop. Those who were against the so-called Great Leap Backwards, hoped the Beatles would release a new groundbreaking single that would put an end to the rock revival. After Sgt. Pepper's and Magical Mystery Tour, everyone expected the new Beatles single to be anything but unprogressive. However, the Beatles released Lady Madonna. The press said, Even the Beatles have bowed to the rock and roll revival trend with their new single. And the irony of this return to the violent age of rock and roll is that it has all undoubtedly come about as a reaction to the pretty pacifist flower power scene of 1967. The pop world wanted livening up. First it was John Fred with Judy in disguise. Then it was Fire Brigade by The Move. The band who is largely leading the rock and roll revival here. And now the Beatles have also lent their name to the rock revival. Lady Madonna, their new single, has a blatant rock feel about it. Melody Maker interviewed Ringo Starr about the new single. Ringo said, Just because the others are in India, I get all the interviews. The thing about Lady Madonna is, people are saying it's a rock and roll record because rock and roll has suddenly hit the headlines with the great revival. Paul thought of it originally. What he's doing on piano is a sort of bad penny blues. 
George Martin said they used brushes on that song. So I used brushes and we did a track with just brushes and the piano. Then Paul decided to sing it in his sort of Elvis voice. Now everyone wants rock to come back so they're saying this is a rock record. They're calling ours rock and roll and the moves fire brigade and the new Elvis record, Guitar Man. If people hadn't been saying the great rock and roll revival, we most probably still would have done this record, and it would have been just the new Beatles single. The early days of rock and roll were the greatest days for me because I was just at the right age, but I don't even think the re-releases of the old rock records will sell. It's just nostalgia for us. Mick Jagger was also asked about the rock and roll revival in interviews. Jagger said, the best kind was all the little Richard and Chuck Berry that was part of every group's basic education. I have great sympathy with the revival but all this stuff is not good enough. If Bill Haley came up with a great new record it might be different, but all it is is hearing all the old ones again. Disc Magazine's journalist Penny Valentine asked several stars of 1968 to give their verdict on Lady Madonna. The Beatles' 17th single is released next Friday and is sure to become pop's hottest talking point. DJs and fans are already wondering whether John Paul George and Ringo have really joined the swing back to rock and roll. Disc conducted a spot check among other pop stars to find their reaction to the record. Mick Jagger said, It could have been much groovier if Paul had done it like Long Tall Sally. But the words are very nice. In fact, the words are the best part. But I feel it's too relaxed with not enough raw excitement. Traffic's Stevie Windward said, It sounds a bit like something Dylan might do. It's different. You can't compare it with anything else they've ever done. I recognized it as being Paul straight away. I can't catch too many of the words. It's about an unmarried mother, isn't it? That's cool. The Beatles have never been very far away from rock and roll. Scylla Black said, I'm biased towards the Beatles so I'd never say anything rotten. Paul played this to me when he brought me my song Step Inside Love. It was a lot slower then, sort of fat swallow bluesy. And honestly, I preferred it that way. The new tempo is growing on me though. It doesn't sound like Paul. It sounds more like Ringo singing in tune. I'm glad that rock trend is returning. I'm a big hooligan for rock and roll. Engelbert Humperdinck said, I like it. Rather unusual and very Presley-ish on the intro voice. It needs a few plays so I doubt if if it will go straight to number one. I didn't expect anything too way out from them this time, but they'd have to do something different. I admire their courage to do something different every time and this is very adventurous. John and Paul are brilliant writers and this is a hit song with a very commercial sound. Manfred Mann's lead singer Mike Dabo said, If it's meant to be rock and roll, which I don't think it is, Paul should have used his little Richard voice. He's trying to use his Elvis voice like he did on She's a Woman. It's nice bright and happy but I'm not knocked out by the vocal performance. It should have taken over more and taken off better at the end. There is a similarity in the rhythm to Bad Penny Blues. Tony Blackburn said, It's not so deep or interesting as some of their other songs and it will probably take me a few hearings to get the feel of it. They've gone right the way back to basic rock and roll and it's quite nice that they've changed their style again. Melody Maker even asked footballer George Best about his opinion on the song. George Best said, Oh well, what can you say about that? Everything the Beatles make is good, and they seem to get better as they go along. It's a rock and roll beat, but more modern, a sort of dig at rock. This is their best yet, which is what I seem to think about every record they make. They just get better and better. George Best also commented on the move's fire brigade. I like the move a lot, the footballer said. Right now I'm patiently waiting for their next LP. I think this is their best single to date but make no mistake, they will become better still. They are a versatile group as well and they're going to last a long time. The single reached number one in the UK for the two weeks beginning the 27th of March. It debuted at number 23 on the US charts for the week ending the 23rd of March and reached number four from the week ending the 20th of April through the week ending the 4th of May.